Alright guys, I'm back with my Smackdown live review for the 15th of April, um, August 2017, yes, I can say April. Um, I thought that this Smackdown Go Home show was okay, but I'm still not invested into SummerSlam yet. Um, I mean, both shows have done what they can, but I'm still not invested into it. Um, hopefully, on Sunday, my kind of mindset has changed, but uh, yeah. Um, Smackdown opened this week with um, Shinsuke Nakamura and Jinder Mahal coming out and having a promo. I think this was like the first time they interacted. Um, you know what, it, it was a decent promo by Nakamura. You can tell that his English is improving and he's, you know, he's getting, he's, he's getting kind of over, he's getting over still with the crowd and stuff like that. But like I said, I think Nakamura's mic skills still need a bit of a tweak. But overall, I thought he cut a good promo here. He said that basically on Sunday he's going to win the WWE title. And then Jinder said that it's, um, it was India's um, Independence Day or whatever and stuff like that. And then after that we had uh, Becky Lynch versus Natalia. I thought that this was an okay match just to start off SmackDown. Um, Natalia gets to win, but um, Naomi um, saves Becky from getting attacked again with a sharpshooter. Then Carmel comes out and she basically warns um, Natalia and Naomi about um, whoever's going to be the champion on Sunday. I might cash in, and uh, it looks like to me that now Corbin's not not going to not got the briefcase now. It looks like maybe they're going to be cashing at SummerSlam with Carmel, and Carmel's probably going to take the belt off Naomi, and um, probably have a Naomi and the Carmel feud at some point. Um, so that's what I was thinking there because it's funny how they like one of the Money in the Bank winners like lose the briefcase today. And, um, you know, they kept it on um, Carmella. So it looks like, kind of, to me, that they want to let Carmella cash in her briefcase and could become Miss Money in the Bank and, you know, whatever. So, yeah. I thought it was a good problem by Carmella. You know, I thought it was a good match. So, moving on to the next match, it was the Usos versus the New Day. Um, you know what? This was a, a good match here. I enjoyed it. Um, the Usos get the win here. Uh, it looks like to me that the New Day are still going to retain because I don't see them, I don't see the New Day um, actually winning the belts back. Um, like, I don't see the New Day dropping the belts, sorry, like this early because they only won them a couple weeks ago at Battleground. So how, well, that wouldn't make any sense for like the Usos to just, because I, I don't like the whole, you know, hot potato, hot potato thing with the belt. It just doesn't make any sense in wrestling. I hate it. Um, so I think that they're going to have the New Day retain and then after SummerSlam we're going to have the New Day versus the Fashion Police for the tag title and I'm hoping that we have that next. But yeah, um, moving on to the Fashion Police, we did have a segment with the Fashion Police. Um, apparently um, the Fashion Police are going to reveal something in two weeks time on SmackDown so very interesting there. Um, you know, another Ross awesome between those two guys. Um, and then we had after that we had Rusev versus Chad Gable. It's supposed to be Rusev versus Chad Gable. Basically, uh, Rusev absolutely kills Chad Gable. He puts him onto the announce table, puts him in the accolade, accolade. and then after that, uh, Randy Orton comes out and RKO's Rusev, um, and that was it really. I see Randy Orton going over on, on Sunday, and uh, yeah. And then we move on to the next bit here, and it was AJ Styles apologizing to Shane McMahon. Um, I thought this segment was good here, you know, um, but like I said, we had the same old thing what we had last week, and I knew it was coming from a mile off. AJ accidentally attacked Shane last week, and then this week KO attacks Shane. And obviously, you know, this is going to lead to KO versus Shane at Hell in a Cell in October, which I think is going to be a good match. I think him and Shane McMahon are going to have a good match, but what does AJ Styles do now? He's going to put Kevin Owens behind him. Now, they could do maybe AJ Styles versus maybe a Baron Corbin. Or they could do maybe AJ Styles versus John Cena for the belt, but I don't I don't know where 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 would AJ Styles go if he is not feuding with a Kevin Owens? I I don't know where the possibilities are unless they they when they, if they do this superstar superstar shape up like the like on that Tuesday after SummerSlam and they actually trade some old Joe over from Raw to SmackDown and they have uh, Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles for that US uh, belt. Uh, I mean, if those two guys feud, then I'm happy with that. But who do you guys think um, AJ will feud with after SummerSlam? Leave your thoughts down below, guys. And uh, yeah, and then the main event tonight was um, John Cena versus Jinder Mahal. Didn't like the main event at all. Um, basically, Cena won the match. Uh, that was a whatever. And then after that, Baron Corbin comes out, attacks Cena. Then he walks up the ramp. 
Then he finally goes back in the ring, cashes in his running that briefcase. Cena's hanging on the apron, he gets knocked out, and then Jim Mahal rolls him up and retains his belt. And uh, this is where it gets bad. Now, if I know that you want a couple of good cash-ins to maybe fail, and you don't want them all to be successful, right? But it, sometimes a failed cash-in works. Like with John Cena, when he failed to cash in a couple of years ago, it worked because he's John Cena, he was already made, whatever. But when you look at what happened with Jinder, well not with Jinder Mahal, with, with uh, Damian Sandow, and when they failed to cash in with him, and he had to get repackaged and repackaged, and he finally got over as Miz Dow, and he was getting over by himself organically, and then they just released him. And then I look at this situation here, and it's looking like to me that I don't, I don't really want to see that happened to Baron Corbin because Baron Corbin is really going to be a big star for that for WWE in the next couple of years. And in my opinion, I do not want them to actually even do the stuff that they did with Damien Sen now. Just saying right there. And, you know, they've messed up with so many future stars in that company. Like, you know, I can go on like your Wade Barrett's, your Dolph Ziggler's, your Damien Sandow's, Cody Rhodes, and um, the list goes on. Even The Miz and John Morrison have been mishandled. But I, I look at... The, you know, this is the best roster, I keep saying this, but they have the best roster they've had since 2001. And if they keep screwing this up, then a lot of people are going to be tuned off their product. I know a lot of people are now, but more than ever, like, they're going to, they're struggling in the ratings and stuff. But like I said, Vince McMahon has got to take a step back and maybe think that maybe my ideas ain't working. Maybe I need to maybe give it to a Triple H and maybe give it to a Stephanie McMahon or maybe give it to my son Shane and see what he his ideas are. Uh, maybe he's getting a bit too old to maybe write storylines and maybe be in charge of WWE. Maybe he's the reason why WWE is in the state it is right now in 2017. Just saying, because, you know, Vince McMahon, I mean, he was the creator of WrestleMania and, you know, SummerSlam and stuff like that. But is he the one who's going to finally kill the WWE? I don't know. But anyway, that was my SmackDown Live review, guys, um, for the 15th of August 2017, guys. But yes, it could the show. Um, leave yourself down below, guys, and I'll check you later.